about anamorphic art. Anamorphic art is a form of perspective. Um, anamorphic means relating to intentional distortion of an image. We're going to explore a simplified version of anamorphic art today, and we're going to be using geometric triangles to create pyramids, and we're going to demonstrate our uh, knowledge of value with shading to make them look like three-dimensional forms. Our inspiration for this project is an artist named Manuel de Pita, and he's a Venice-based graffiti artist who has now become a fine artist. And his art has taken him all around the world, and he creates anamorphic illustrations on urban buildings. And if, as you can see, this is a picture of him and uh, his artwork looks th so three-dimensional that it looks like you can actually put your hand underneath. It has a very sculptural quality. Um, and that's all with distorting the shapes and the contours of the shapes and the shading. So the value from light to dark creates that contrast, but really it's all painted on a flat building. Even those water droplets look so realistic. But we're gonna practice a more simplified version of anamorphic art today. Um, and we're going to be using shapes, forms, and value. So let's get started. So as you can see here in DePita's artwork and his moniker as a graffiti artist was Pita, um, he uses traditional shapes and he turns them into irregular yet smooth geometric forms. Uh, true anamorphic art requires the viewer to look from a specific vantage point. For DePita, the message is a temporary interruption of normality, which allows the viewer to reveal the deceptiveness of human perception. So when you look at, like I said before, when you look at the building from a certain vantage point, some aspects will look flatter um, from depending on where you stand. So our anamorphic art, we're just really going to be manipulating our shapes and turning them into forms um, by using shading. So the messages that DePita is really conveying is more about your perception and uh, he incorporates optical illusions with anamorphosis to alter human perception of space and reality. So um, abstract artists can have a message within their artwork and his artwork basically has to do with dealing with uh, your perception and how deceptive your perception can be depending on what you're looking at and how it is represented to you. So artwork doesn't have to be very realistic. It doesn't have to be representative of actual images. It could be just abstract forms and shapes and still send a message. So first we have to talk about triangles and these are geometric triangles. So we, you have different types of triangles. Equilateral means they have three equal sides and three equal angles. Isosceles triangles have two angles that are equal and two sides that are equal. Right angle triangles have a right angle, only one right angle, and scalene triangles have no equal sides or equal angles. Acute, all three uh, angles are acute, okay, and that means they are less than 90 degrees. I remember it because of the part of the word cute. So cute meaning smaller, so less than 90 degrees, so that's a, a good way to remember what an acute triangle, the angles are less than 90 degrees. And obtuse has one obtuse angle and two acute angles. So two angles are smaller than 90 degrees or less than 90 degrees. And one angle is about it's 130 degrees or it is, um, uh, it's larger than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. So it could be like 130 degrees, 100. 60 degrees, but it would be less than 180 degrees. So those are our geometric, you know, if you're in geometry, you know about these triangles, okay? We're not gonna be measuring our triangles out. We're just going, I just want to show you the different shapes of different types of triangles because you're going to want to use um, different triangles to create variety within your artwork. So as you can see here, 
These are shaded pyramids that look three-dimensional, but they all started out as triangles. So the first step is going to be drawing a triangle, okay? So you're gonna need a straight edge, a pencil, and a piece of paper, because we're going to do our first one in graphite shading. So I'm just going to draw out a triangle here, just to show you using my ruler. It doesn't matter if my sides are equal or unequal. They just all have to connect, okay? So those three lines now made a shape, which is a triangle. The next step in your triangle, once you have your triangle drawn, is you're going to find the center and draw a dot in the middle of the center. Once you have your triangle drawn and a dot in the center, you're going to connect the dot to the corners of the triangle and you have three corners so you're going to use three line segments to do that from the center make sure the ruler touches the dot in the center and the the corner so that you have a straight line if you don't have a ruler you can use any anything as a straight edge an edge of a packet of post-it notes you could use um a book anything with a straight edge, a piece of cardboard, as long as it's nice and smooth and straight. Once you have your pyramid, we have to go into shading the pyramid, okay? So you're going to pick a light source on your paper. And the light source is just where the light is shining from. But before we go into that, we kind of have to review some shading from light to dark, okay? Um, a value scale is basically when an artist practices their shading. And this value scale goes from white to black, and that's just done with a number two pencil, okay? So we can practice very simply without even having to draw the value scale because you've done this um, for many years in school, um, probably from third grade on up. Um, you can practice smooth shading from light to dark or dark to light just using the side of the tip of your pencil, keeping your coloring direction in one direction, nice and neat. Now, the darker you want to get your graphite, the harder you need to push down with your pencil. So the harder the pressure, the darker the value. And then you start lightening up the pressure on your pencil. And once you start to lighten up, the graphite gets lighter and lighter and lighter until you go so light that you blend right into the white part of the paper, okay? So pressing harder makes the value darker, pressing lighter is gonna give you a lighter value. And the same will go for um, shading and color when we get to that. For your first drawing, I'm not expecting you to do a full sheet of anamorphic art, okay? We're just going to do maybe one, two, three, four, five, six pyramids, just so you get a feel for it because our, our final project uh, for this part of the unit will be in color. But I want you to practice in black and white first so that you um, get a feel for how to create these pyramids and how to make them look three-dimensional with the use of value, which is shading. For this part of the project, you need a fresh piece of paper, you need a ruler, a sharp pencil, an eraser, and a blending stump would be handy. We're going to start again by drawing our first triangle in. So draw a triangle in the middle of the paper. It can be any type of triangle, okay? Any type of geometric triangle. Put a small dot in the center. You don't want that dot to really show up you want it to blend into the lines. From the center, you're going to draw three line segments and they go from the center to the corner of the triangle. At this point, I draw a very light circle. That's going to be my light source. So I put these little dashes around it to show that it looks like the sun. And you're gonna visualize where the light is going to hit the pyramid. Okay, so now we took a shape with lines, we turned it into a what looks like a pyramid from a bird's eye view. And now we're going to shade it in to make it look like a three-dimensional form. 
okay? So the light source is very important and it stays in the same spot and it's gonna shoot at the pyramids depending on how you draw them in. So I'm choosing this one to be the lightest, so it's my lightest value. It's going to stay the white of the paper, okay? It's going to stay the white of the paper. This will be my medium value and this one I'm choosing as my darkest value. So I don't have to do anything to the white one and I'm going to lightly shade in with the lightest pressure using the side of the tip of my pencil. I'm shading in. Try to keep the direction nice and neat. But you can always smooth it out with a blending stump. I wouldn't use your finger for this because you're going to go outside of the lines. You wanna keep your shading inside the lines. So for this project, it's very precise. We're using straight, straight edge lines and um, the shapes are very crisp. So you wanna keep the shading inside the shape. This is my darker value. So I'm going to make it the darkest black that I can get out of my pencil. And I'm going to try to do it one, just one time. Um, but if I have to go over it a second time to make it darker, you know, that's fine too. So if you need to go over it two times to make it really dark, just stay inside your line. So when you get close to the corners and the outline, you're going to want to slow down. In the middle, you can work a little bit quicker. And remember to keep your pencil sharp because when you um, work with a sharper pencil, you can actually get darker marks out of the graphite. When the pencil's dull, it doesn't make as dark of a mark. So I'm using the side of the tip. I turn my pencil and it almost does a little bit of like self-sharpening because I'm using all of the round the cone shape of my point. So I'm going over it now. I'm trying to make it more even because it seems like it's lighter over here and a little darker over here. And we'll talk about shading inside each shape too. But right now I just want solid shading just to make it simple for you. Okay, so that would be the first pyramid. So now you're gonna build triangles off of the sides of the first pyramid. I wouldn't draw 10 pyramids and then try to shade them in because you may get confused with the design, so it's much easier if you just do one at a time. So now I'm going to make a skinny triangle over here, or a different shaped triangle. Put my dot. It doesn't even have to be completely in the center. As you move your dots away from the central location in the triangle, it's actually gonna distort the pyramid too. So that's another way that we can use anamorphosis to distort the shape. So now I have to visualize where's the light shining. I think it's gonna hit this piece. This will be my darkest value and this is going to be my, my lighter value. So I'm going to make this one lighter. Again, shading in with the lightest pressure on my pencil, taking my blending stump, smoothing out the, the shading strokes uh, from my pencil, and going in and making this one really, really dark. So you're going to have to think about your light source. It's very important that don't miss the step of putting a little light sketch. You're going to want to erase that eventually, um, but don't Please remember to put the light source on your paper so you always know where the light is coming from. So we're just trying to keep a uniform light source, but that doesn't mean that the light value is going to stay on the same side. You have to kind of think about where would it be lighter. I think the light would hit this a little bit, but it's not going to hit this part over here. 
Uh, a good rule of thumb for this uh, exercise is to make sure that you don't have two of the same values touching one another. Okay, notice it's light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, medium, dark, medium, light. Okay, I don't have medium and medium touching one another. So you want to think about that when you're working. So I just continued building my triangles, creating more pyramids, and then shading them with uh, three different shades of gray, uh, leaving the white of the paper, and then a light shade and a dark shade. And then um, now it has created this really cool abstract form that looks very three-dimensional because of the shading, because shading from light to dark does create three-dimensional form. So we took that flat shape triangle, um, uh, the pyramid that looks three-dimensional but not quite doesn't really have much form to it and then added the shading to create the three-dimensional form so now that we understand how to use the shading and how to draw the pyramids let's try it in color so let's take a look at our value scale again uh, in colored pencil it's the same principle as graphite pencil where you would leave the white of the paper as your lightest highlighted area and then you gradually press harder with your pencils to make it darker. But in colored pencil, you can also use three different shades of the same color to um, layer and overlap to make the colors darker um, as well. So you don't just have to use one colored pencil and press harder, you can actually um, cheat a little bit and you can mix some medium blue in with the lighter blue to make the darker values and then also mix your medium and your darkest blue, this isn't black, it's indigo blue, um, to make the darkest value. So let's do a little practice. So we're gonna mix and blend to create a really cool gradient. So I'm gonna start with my dark blue, but I'm not pressing really hard right now because with colored pencil, you want to layer the colors. So you don't wanna press too hard in the beginning. And now I'm gonna come in with my medium blue, starts to darken up the color. And if I feel like it's not dark enough, I can go back in now and press harder. And this will fill up the tooth of the paper more. So you don't wanna do this too much in the beginning because then you wouldn't be able to layer your colors. And then I can start with my medium overlapping some of the dark, pressing hard with the medium color. And now I'm gonna pull away and I'm going to just use the medium blue and lighten up my pressure, lighten up my pressure, lighten up my pressure. And then I can move on to a lighter blue. Lighten up the pressure, lighten up the pressure, lighten up the pressure until I go back to the white of the paper. I'm pressing so lightly that you can barely see it. So I can take my light blue and layer it over some of my medium blue to make that area a little bit darker. So I can get a nice gradient from dark to light blue back to the white of the paper. I'm gonna try to get the lightest value by pressing really light. So pressing harder makes it darker, pressing lighter, your color will come out lighter. And you can also overlay and layer uh, different shades of the same color and that works the same. So our end piece is going to be a rendered abstract anamorphic design in colored pencil. You're going to choose your favorite color and you can either choose one pencil and just get very different shades out of that one pencil. Or if you have a variety of different shades, um, that means like different tones, light blue, medium blue, dark blue. Um, you might even have more uh, a variety in the tones and shades and you certainly can use those. You can also add white to the light blue to make it a little bit lighter. And if you wanted to, you could add black to your uh, dark blue, but if you have a really dark blue, you're not gonna need to do that. Uh, so let's get started with our color version of our anamorphic design.
As you can see in the video, I use the colorless blender to blend in the darker areas and the lighter areas. If you don't have a colorless blender, and colorless blender is just a colored pencil with no pigment. It has wax and no color. Pigment means color. You, would, you could take a white colored pencil and go over the lighter areas and that will help you um, to smooth it out, similar to what a blending stump would do in graphite. You don't want to use a dirty blending stump on a colored pencil drawing, so that's why you would use just a light colored pencil to do that. And for the darker areas, you definitely can go back over them with the really dark uh, colored pencil if you don't have a colorless blender. You can also take your ruler and kind of crisp up your edges if you wanted to, but you have to be really careful and make sure the pencil's sharp. So abstract art, you can really send a message. Um, to your viewer, just like uh, Manuel Dorita, uh, he just fools the perception of what you're looking at. He's fooling your um, your mind's perception. And, you know, depending on where you are uh, looking at the building, it will look more distorted and more realistic, very architectural. It looks like the parts are really coming out of the building. But then when you get closer to the building and really get up close and see it, it's flatly painted this is a flat building. There's nothing sticking out. And it's just the way he manipulates the shapes and the forms um, that really make it look three-dimensional and the angle that you're standing on. So anamorphic designs are just, you know, abstract distortions of shapes and forms and shading color from light to dark or black and white from light to dark. So I hope you enjoyed this project and I can't wait to see uh, what you create. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.